Welcome to Absolutely Obsolete, and today is Joypad Day. Yes, I'm going to be talking about knockoff joypads and official joypads. Which one is better? Find out today. Now, here are some of my controllers. Now, they're stored in uh, not the best kind of way, but it'll do. Anyway, I thought I'd show you some of the good, some of the bad, and some of the ugly. Please enjoy. So, here we have the Humble Mass System Controller. It has a D-pad, it feels like mush, and two buttons, which also feel like you're pressing mashed potato. Yep, it was probably one of the first controllers I ever used, so... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's usable. If, if that's a good thing, I think that's probably the only pro. I'm not really a big fan of it, but um, let's see uh, the alternative controller that I have in my collection. Let's see if it's better. Ah, so here we are. Another mass system controller. Now this is called um, uh, the Control Pad by Competition Pro. Brilliant name. <laughs> let's have a look at the back. It's, oh, it's a Honeybee. That's probably one of the names. Honeybee number SG2. It's actually got a better D-pad, although it's a bit chunky. It's definitely better than the previous uh, previous controller. The buttons kind of uh, have kind of a rounding roundness to them, so y your finger kind of like slots in a bit more. It's probably better grip um, because the uh, master controller was quite smooth, and also you have, of course, the turbo buttons because every controller is better with turbo. So yes, um, I would say this is definitely an improvement and um, I would use this over the uh, mass system controller if I had to, definitely, if that was my only choice. And I'll tell you why later. Right, on to our next controller. We have controller number two, the original NES controller. And yes, it's still as good as you remember. Brilliant buttons, nice little dent so your fingers are going. A bit like the uh, the Honeybee controller for the uh, mass system actually, they kind of copied that. Um, start and select, and your D-pad, which always feels great because Nintendo D-pads are the best. Yes. Um, yeah, so there's not really much you can say about this, uh, everybody knows it, everybody loves it. It is the uh, Nintendo pad. Now, let's look at my alternative for this system and uh, let's see if it's any better. So here we are, the Hyperkin uh, NES controller. This is actually quite new, it only came out in the last few years, and actually was bundled with the, uh, the NES Retron um, uh, emulator machine, as I'd like to call it. It's a pretty terrible machine, it's got terrible sound, and not very good um, emulation at all, but the controller is actually really nice. It's got these nice dents here, that fit your palm, Got the, again those dinted buttons, which are like the original NES controller. Don't select. Like if anything, I feel like because this D-pad's probably a bit fresher. It actually feels better. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes, Hyperkin controller. I would actually prefer this over the original, just because it's slightly more comfortable. And yeah, so I'd go for this one definitely. So here we have another controller. It is the Mega Drive controller. Now, it looks like a boomerang that Batman would probably throw, and it feels brilliant. Great D-pad, great big fat buttons, with uh, nice letters on there. Start, button, and yeah, it just feels, feels great. Like playing a kidney bean, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. A giant kidney bean with buttons, that's what it's like, and it is amazing. Not really much to say about this apart from how much I love it. But there is another controller by a third party brand. Will it be better than this? I'm sure we'll find out in just a second. Da -da 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 -da. Here we are, the Competition Pro. Second series apparently. And this again has lovely big fat buttons, a bit like the original controller. Very, very, if not identical D-pad. If anything, it, it actually feels as good, if not slightly looser, 
than um, the original Mega Drive pad, but if I played it, it works, it feels great. I, I love how it's still got the same styling on here. And of course you've got turbo buttons for every single one, which are kind of shaped like the start button. Now I'm not too sure about this, I think I'd rather have like a selection toggle, so I could still use these, because I don't think I'll be using that over these. This was weird, because the start button's kind of designed to be pressed not too often, that's why it's kind of like a a round, well, a long shape, while well, these are definitely designed to be used a lot. So, I'd actually go with the original instead of this, just because of that, kind of like, that design, I don't think it's improved, it's improved on the uh, original controller in any way, so I feel like I might as well stick with the original. Ah, I bet you thought I'd be done with the uh, Mega Drive controller, but I'm not. Here is the wireless variant. Um, six button controller, feels fantastic, feels great, brilliant d-pad, brilliant buttons, the only bad thing about this controller is when um, somebody steps in front of your console and blocks your RF signal, then you're kind of screwed. And we have a lot of toggle here for player one, player one and player two. Yes, it's a great little controller, I love it, can't, can't really fault it, and yeah, um, it's a 6 point controller and it's for the uh, Genesis Mega Drive and they're always great, but this one's even better because it's wireless. Now this one here is not strictly for the Mega Drive, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. It is one of those USB PC controllers and it's fashioned on a Mega Drive 6 point controller to the same degree. Now at first glance it looks pretty nice actually, it looks small but nice. But when you get into it, it sounds like a maraca. It sounds horrific. And the buttons feel terrible and loose. The D-pad is terrible. So if you're looking for a USB Mega Drive controller, stay away from Retrolink. Please. They are just oh terrible Chinese rubbish. And there's your proof. Made in China. So, get yourself something like um, a Retron, I think Retron do good controllers, or an official Sega controller as well, which I think work on PC and the original Mega Drive, depending on the, uh, uh, I think you can get an adapter for it. So yeah, I'd go for that over this any day. But unfortunately, I bought this before they came out, a good while ago, and they are terrible. So yeah, go with an original or a, a decent um, repo brand, such as Retron, or uh, an official re-release of the Sega controller, because they're much better. So another controller, yes, it is the Super Nintendo, one of the most iconic controllers ever made. Nearly as iconic as the original NES controller, I'd say, and more practical with more buttons. So what can I say, again you've got that excellent D-pad, kind of squishy soft buttons, if anything I wish they kept the, cur the, the kind of curvature you got inside on the NES ones, they were a bit better. Um, and two new shoulder buttons, uh, they're brilliant. Here we are, select and start. The more buttons the better, and this is certainly a brilliant controller. And we have another Super Nintendo controller, now this one's a bit different. It's by SN, and it's called a Pro Pad. Now, as you can see, it's got lovely innards, you can, it's, it's like you can see into its body. It's like an x-ray. See all the little buttons and its squishy, squishy working parts. Yeah, yeah, it does look cool. I do like, I've always liked see-through stuff. I kind of came from that era when see-through stuff was everywhere. Uh, early 90s, it was just see-through plastic controllers and everything. Had a bit of worse for wear on this one, but it still still works. I'm pretty good, Nick. Um, it a, it's not a bad controller. The D-pad is, you know, it doesn't feel as good at all. It's, oh, just, you can just tell it's not going to be as responsive. But again, you've got those kind of like, Squidgy, similar, very similar buttons to the actual official controller in terms of the, the action buttons, but I really don't like these these top buttons. Listen to that. Oh no, this no, not good at all. And um, too many turbo buttons. There's one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there. 
just everywhere, table buttons everywhere. So I'd go with the original controller because this is just too convoluted and a bit of an ugly mess really of a controller, but it's, at least it's unique. I bet you thought I was done with uh, Super Nintendo controllers. Yes, this is a Turbo Touch 360 and it's some kind of like touchpad related um, controller and it's as bad as it looks. I kind of brought this for like nearly nothing, just for the novelty factor really. Again we've got toe buttons for, uh, for all these here. We start and select, which are, that's not comfortable is it? But, whoa, just shove your, your thumb up there, start and select. And your two buttons on the top, which are far too small really. You could have been a bit bigger and wider across the shell. But yeah, um, it kind of reminds me of this Steam controller where it's got kind of a touch, a precursor to that, and it's got kind of a touchpad sort of thing going on. And it's terrible. It's not tactile, it doesn't get any feedback from it. It's just, oh. Maybe like if it was like a touch phone style thing and it vibrated when you pressed it, it would probably feel a bit more satisfying. But this is horrific. Do not buy it. Just use a normal SNES controller. They're the best. I can't. I wouldn't really recommend any third party ones for that. Yes, another SNES controller, or is it? Actually, it is a PC controller in the kind of the shape of a Super Nintendo controller almost. Um, it's got the squeegee buttons. What? Well, that's kind of a start and select. I'm not sure what TC and TD use. It kind, of, it kind of is. And almost kind of a. Almost kind of like a. Kind of a rolly bowly kind of like D pad, very not very satisfying to press at all. If anything, it's like it nearly as bad as that Retro Link one. <laughs> but at least the shoulder buttons seem alright. Yeah, um, this could have been one of your options on the PC if you wanted a Super Nintendo like experience, if you got the drivers working and everything. So at least it's a, it's, it's a cool novelty in that way. But to be honest, I think there was adapters that existed where you could actually get the official controllers working with uh, old hardware. I think they were quite big, but I think I'd rather go further than this. But it's interesting novelty nonetheless. Yes, the N64 pad. What's to say? Great D-pad and horrific arm cramp inducing controller. I really never liked the N64. There's going to be certain ways you could hold it or something. Um, I don't know why that with a shooter and maybe fire like that, but no, no, never like this controller really. No, 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 not at all. So really, I suppose any third party controllers that maybe mimic this are probably going to be as bad. But I did like the analog, analog stick to be honest, it was one of the early ones, so that was pretty cool. But it's weird that it's just one going back to it. But yeah, it's, it's a well built controller, I, I will say that. It's definitely not loose, shaky, or anything. Official Nintendo stuff is always good quality. It's just, I think, through the passages of time, it's it's not that good. But otherwise, I suppose it was good for its time, and it's a solid controller. It's just not one I like. But yeah, let's see if, uh, if my third-party controller kind of beats this. So we have the Superpad Colors Performance. I don't know what brand this was by, uh, I think it must just be Performance, yep. And it's, it's actually quite a nice, weird design. It's a lot lighter and a bit more, maybe a bit more comfortable. Not as wide here compared to the M64. It's got more rounded buttons as well. It's quite satisfying that the analog stick is a bit tougher. Is, I don't think it's going to be as tactile, but it's definitely not loose, so that's good. I don't know if there'll be any drift or anything, but the D-pad is definitely definitely not there. But to be honest, not too many games really used it. It was more about this now. This is kind of just maybe I might have selected something. But we looked down, there wasn't really many 2D games. So yeah, I think I actually, I don't know, I, I feel like I could actually see myself using this one more. I'm, I'm going to say that's a tie really, because to be honest I don't like either of them that much, but I suppose if I had to use one I might give this one a try, versus the uh, official controller, just because I feel like it, oh, 
Although the top is pretty bad. Uh, it's, it's a bit cramped. Actually, you know what? I'll probably go for the uh, fish controller. I've, I've changed my mind there. Just because of the top being a bit weird. But yeah, either way, I don't like any of them. <laughs> yes, the original PlayStation 1 controller. Before, it got two giant thumb thumbsticks each side and uh, I made it look huge and ugly. I feel like this is actually a lot more elegant, even though I had a lot less buttons and a lot, a lot less kind of like... A lot less about it in a way. Because obviously the analog sticks were a big thing and they really did drive the future, but I do actually prefer this in a way. Especially from playing the early PlayStation games, it's just a lot lighter and a lot more a lot more comfortable. And what's the point if you're playing an early PlayStation 1 game that doesn't support analog sticks? So this is kinda it's just an extra weight. But I suppose there's one other thing as well, the rumble. I don't, you do miss a rumble from this as well, the rumble feature. I don't know, I've kind of got a soft spot for it. But yeah, it's, it's a good controller still. This, or the, all the analog stick variety, pretty, pretty decent. So yeah, go for it, yeah. Good buttons, tactile, and nice. Can't go wrong. Now, I actually don't own a third party controller for the PlayStation 1. Surprising, I know there's quite a few of them that actually came out. But I do own this interesting um, PC um, clone early PC clone and it has a weird kind of like look at that d-pad it looks like the real thing but then if I'm stuck like a I don't know like a stick bit at the top there maybe to make it a bit more like it um more like a biting kind of stick maybe something popped out there I don't know if it snapped off I can't remember something go in there and you'd have a bit more of a stick kind of like thing but I, why not just keep this a d-pad I think one issue is the D-pad's a lot smaller as well than an actual real PlayStation pad. But they've got similar styling here. The start and select, but they've just got A and B, and the top buttons as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually quite quite nice, I actually quite like it. It's just a shame about this, uh, this D-pad thing, I don't know what the heck this is. Maybe for driving games, you can go like this? <laughs> Maybe, I'm not sure. That would be weird. Imagine Trump driving like this. I feel like it's going to snap. <laughs> but yeah, um, very similar in style, but probably a billion times worse. Again, I think there's probably adapters out there which you can have hooked up a original controller on. Um, much more preferable to this on the PC, I think. Or well, actually, just use a keyboard and mouse. Probably easy. The uh, Nintendo GameCube controller. Now this controller, this controller is pretty damn decent. I've always liked the design of it. Definitely, it's had a, it's it's kind of almost like an Xbox 360 controller in terms of the two sticks. Kind of, uh, uh, not not in uh, in line with each other, and it has these weird looking kind of almost looks like might be a sweet for some reason kind of the, the buttons and the colours and everything. And you've got the Z button here, and it's weird that they don't have one which matches it, but... And to be honest, one thing I don't like is these so much, they're a bit... clickety. Not as smooth as an analog kind of trigger button, but yeah, it's, it's actually a really good controller, and a lot of people love it. And I can see why. Uh, I'm not a big GameCube player, but... I can see why. It's a good controller and I don't think there will probably be any third party controller out there that will beat it. Apart from I think there's one called the Wave Bird which I think is a wireless controller and I think I've heard that's really really good but I don't own that one. Yes, uh, I'll show you my um, equivalent um, knockoff version of this and then let's see if it actually feels better. I have a uh, pretty terribly named controller. I kind of don't really like the... Uh, I don't know, it's got like a weird kind of like shine to it. But it's the Venom um, GameCube controller, and straight away you notice it's got an extra button. Um, I've not tried to use this in the games, I've got, I never understand why I put an extra button on. This isn't maybe a turbo variety of this one. Maybe it is. It's unclear, it must have some sort of mode, maybe you can program it. I've actually never used this one. Um, let's, let's give it a test. Does it stick? I nearly did then. Uh, it's not bad. Not bad. It doesn't feel too bad compared to the original. I feel like it does stick a bit. Like 
could just be old, old gun. Oh, this D pad. This D pad is just like it just feels like pain. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, horrible. But this, uh, this, this stick's okay as well. And your buttons stick out a bit more. Not bad. And you've got your start button as well. And these turbo buttons, but to be honest, aesthetically, it's very close, but also quite far away, it's very ugly, I don't like it at all, and that d-pad if I had to use that for certain games, I'd throw it on the wall, it is horrific, so yes, go for the original GameCube controller. We have the Atari 2600 controller, uh, one of the most simple controllers, this one's actually quite old, I actually got it from uh, uh, Canada of all places, with a uh, Canadian 2600 as well, just because I thought uh, that it, the American consoles were a big thing, and so was the 2600, so I thought, yeah, I fancy the uh, American variant. Not that it's that much different, I just kind of brought it because I wanted it. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the stick, and it's very twiddly and stiff, and kind of mimicking the uh, arcade machines of the time. And yeah, one button, play like that, play like this, or however you play it. And yeah, um, it's very simple. Um, the buttons, not bad, not bad. It's obviously I've seen a lot of action, uh, but this itself is too stiff for me. I don't think I've used this that much for very long. I'd probably get hand cramp after a while. So I'll show you a excellent um, alternative. There's actually two. One I'll show you, and one I'll just mention. It's your alternative Atari controller. See there? Would be this little beauty in my eyes. It's a, it's a one button D-pad controller. There's your fire button and there's a turbo version of that button. It's actually pretty decent, I like, I like this controller. Aesthetically it doesn't really match the unit but... Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. Um, I think they were made for Atari's and Commodore systems so... They've got that recognisable kind of plug. And if you look at this plug it looks very similar to another, another console... Uh, uh, well another pad I showed you earlier which was the Sega Master System and Mega Drive so you could actually use this on either of the systems but the only problem is this is only one button controller with a d-pad so I think you could only get away with Sonic and the Hedgehog games if you had to use this controller uh, pretty much the same with the Master System but if you wanted to use a different controller to the Master System you could use the Mega Drive one there'll be a few buttons you can't use on there but um, Overall, uh, it's a pretty cool controller to use for the for the Master System actually, and this isn't too bad for the Atari. It's a lot better than that stiff um, joystick. It's got a pretty decent D-pad, and although I'm not the biggest fan of these weird kind of like shaped squashed buttons, they're um they're still probably better than uh, than the joystick and the original joystick anyway. Uh, the games like Pac-Man and stuff like that, we've really got to be a bit more precise to get through and quick. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I'd go for this one definitely. Go for this or something, or maybe even just use a Mega Drive controller because, or or a Master System controller actually, because they both work on the Atari system as well. They both have this same plug. So yeah, it's not bad though. I think I'd probably use this for the Atari, just because I kind of like prefer the aesthetic, and I know I've got one button and a turbo version, so. I've not got any unnecessary buttons knocking about the place. So yeah, I'll go for this one, for the Atari, definitely, over the original. So, uh, in conclusion, I think we can uh, pretty much agree that 9 times out of 10, that the official pad is the way to go. So, all those times you were lumbered with the cheap knockoff controller as player 2, you were right. You got the raw deal. So stick with your official S64 uh, controllers, your official GameCube, and uh, your official Super Nintendo. But if you're going to go Master System, get yourself a honeybee instead of this. I'm absolutely obsolete. And remember, old is 
gold. Oh, sometimes I don't make this easy for myself. Oh, I'm strangling myself now. <laughs> All because of you. Oh, God. Right, I might be here for some time. Catch you next time, guys. Oh. Oh. Oh, I can breathe.